Like a lot of people, I like to make grooves and dados in my stock by moving the fence and making a cut. I could use a dado stack to do this, but it's a lot of putting it all together and then taking it all apart, put my old saw blade back in. It's just, it's a lot of time and it's just a lot easier just to move the fence each time. So I made this jig that uses the Fibonacci spiral to make this a little bit easier to move my fence. And the way it works is this. I put the jig on the table, lock it in place, and I can make micro adjustments and lock my fence and make the cuts. With this attached, I can just move it a tiny bit, lock my fence and make the cut. Today I'm gonna to show you how you can make this creeper jig. I'll have all the plans for this on the website, which is gonna be in the description down below. To get started, this is pretty much all you need right here. I might need to add something extra later on, but this is the core of everything right here. I'm using a magnet that I got from Harbor Freight. I do have something that I found online that you can get. I think it's the same size. So you'll wanna work off whatever magnet that you choose to use. This is three inches. I wouldn't go any lower than this. I've got a two inch one that I don't think is as powerful. And we need a little bit of power to hold this onto the table. I've got what's gonna be the knob the top and bottom part of the box that the magnet will sit inside of, and the creeper on top. All the dimensions for this, all the pieces, everything that you'll need, materials, tools used, everything's gonna be on the website, which is in the description down below. I've also got another video on my main channel that will show you how to make this without any instructions at all if you just wanna see what it looks like. The first thing that we'll do is work on the creeper part right here. When I first sat down to design this, I was gonna have all these really complicated things that we were gonna do with a, a compass, but I found something a little bit easier. We'll start off with the rectangle, and I'm gonna use a marking gauge and set this to five and a quarter inches. You don't have to have a marking gauge to do this. So five and a quarter inches, and we'll just draw a line across the top. With my measurement still set at five and a quarter inches, I'm gonna draw another line right across here, and now I've got a square. And really, this is all about just creating three different squares in all. Now that I've made this rectangle, I'm gonna set this to three and a quarter inches. I'm gonna start at the bottom here and make a line across. Now I'll set this to two inches and I'll draw another line right here. So I've got a square here, a square here, and a square here. We are going to use a compass, but from this point it's really easy. To create that spiral, we've got three different points that we're gonna set our compass to. This is gonna be the first one here, this will be the second one, and this will be our last one. So you can see that we're going counterclockwise as we do this. Now to get started with this, I'm gonna put my point on our first mark there, and I wanna make sure that it's the exact length of my square. So once I've got that to the edge, I can come around and make my first arc. Now I can set this for my point right here, and I want my pencil to land right where they intersect, the lines here. I can move this around. And finally, I'll come to this point here and complete it. I'll make sure that my pencil is right on that line and I'll make my next and last arc. And that's our golden spiral. We only really need this outside here. We don't need to keep spiraling this more inside the other squares, but we do need to place a mark on here that will allow us to drill a hole out. To find the point, we're gonna set this to three and seven eighths. I'll come in here and I'm just gonna draw a line right up here. Next, I'll set this to two and three eighths. I'll come from this side and I'll make my mark. And this is where we'll drill out a five sixteenths inch hole. With this now drilled out and marked, we'll take it over to the bandsaw. It should be obvious at this point, but we wanna make sure that we cut right around the edge. I'm gonna take this to the sander when I'm done to clean it up, but we need to be really careful with this. With this done for right now, we can set this aside and work on the base. I'm gonna go ahead and add some double-sided tape to hold the lid onto the base. With it added now, I'm just gonna draw an X on the top. I'll go ahead and drill this out with a 5 16 drill bit. 
I'll add my magnet to the top and then my carriage bolt. I want to cut this out so that it's a circle shape. So I'm going to use a washer. This is a fender washer. And I'm just going to trace around it. Now I'll flip this over and put my magnet on the other side. And I'm going to use a number six washer to mark a circle that I'll later cut out with the base. Now that I've cut this out, I can go ahead and remove the top and I can cut this bottom center out. Now I'm just going to add a little bit of glue and glue this on with some clamps. We'll give this a chance to dry and we'll come back. I'm just using a 3 8 twist bit now to enlarge the hole. And a 5 30 seconds bit to drill out the splines. In order for my magnet to go up and down, I need to have some kind of threading in this, so I'm going to be using a T-nut. To add this, I want to use a little bit of epoxy. I'm going to add it to the underside, the barrel, and the tines. I need the T-nut to sit flush to the top of the surface, otherwise the magnet will be parallel to the top of the table, and our handle will be at an angle. So I'm just going to put a smaller bolt in here, I'll add a washer, and then a nut, and this will just help to pull it in. I'll go ahead and leave this attached like this, I'm going to let the epoxy set for a little bit before I take it off. In order for the magnet to go up and down, we need to have a handle on the top. So first I found center with a combination square. Then I set a compass to an inch and a quarter radius, drew my circle, and then set my compass to an inch and a half, and then made the last circle. I'll drill each one of these outside holes at three quarters of an inch, and then the inside, I'm only gonna go down the head of my carriage bolt, and then finish with a 5 16 bolt. So let's go ahead and do that now. The next thing that we need to do is add a carriage bolt by adding epoxy inside and then sinking it in. If you've already seen the thumbnail, you know that I've switched this for a purple heart one, but this one will work just fine. There's a few things that we're gonna do all at one time. First, I'll add epoxy and sink this in. Taking off the nut when I'm done. I'm gonna go ahead and add a spring to the bolt because this will be tightening and loosening and I want this to have some kind of pressure so that it's not wobbling on the, on the bolt. So that's where the spring comes in. It'll help hold it to the surface, by, but also allowing it to twist. I'll put another washer on this, and then my creeper, and then I'll add another washer, and then the base. The next thing that's gonna go on is a nut. The magnet will go on after that, and then we'll add the last nut to the top. Now we need to make sure that we are adding thread lock I'm using permanent stuff here. Put my magnet in. I'll give it some time to cure and we'll come back and we'll finish this up. This is the jig finish, but there's still something that we need to worry about with this. There is gonna be a sweet spot on your fence where as you push this, it's gonna push the fence equally on both the top and the bottom. To find the sweet spot, it's relatively easy. Once you've unlocked the fence, you'll take your finger and you'll place it against the fence and you'll find the place where it doesn't bend either one way or the other. So as I push up here, the fence wants to push up here on the top and it doesn't do anything on the bottom. If I push down here, it catches again. So I know I'm not even right here, but I found that, and I've even placed a mark here, if I push right here, it's a pretty easy push and it's balanced across the entire fence. So I'll attach my fence to this and put the magnet down. You'll know it's down when it kind of clips onto the table. You can feel it grab real tight. And now when I twist this, 
that point stays constant throughout the entire push. It slides evenly across the table. I can lock it each time after I've made my turn. If I were going to add something to this, I would add a knob. It gives me a little better control and makes this feel solid as I use it. You really don't have to make your own. You can buy a store knob, a cabinet knob even, and that will work just fine for this. I like that when I use the jig, I can watch the measuring tape to get precise adjustments. But you can go a step further by adding a few measurements to the top of the jig. I think inch and a half marks could make it a little more useful as it does give me some kind of starting point on the jig. To do it, you can add a ruler to the top of the table saw and move it slowly, making a mark at each point. But it's really entirely optional. Anyway, thank you so much for watching my videos. It really means a lot to me. If you leave a comment down below, please thank my patrons. They're the ones that help keep the website going and me inspired. But let me know if this is something that you might make yourself. How could we improve this? And remember to keep making things.